The January issue of the Delta Farm Press isn't the only time you can see George B. Franklin gracing a magazine cover. Back in 1966, Franklin's silhouette appeared on the cover of Southern Living. By the way, the dog is the one in front of the P-Row, not me. I'm the one with a pipe in my mouth. The feature was on hunting on the farm, something Franklin's been doing his entire life. I feel like that part of my job as a farmer is to be a conservationist. I guess if you grow up and there are no deer, there are really few places for the ducks to land, and you are a hunter, then it's your duty to create these places. And I've enjoyed it, and I've learned a lot, learned by doing. George Franklin has been a conservationist long before most knew what the word meant. This National Wildlife Federation Award was given to him back in 1966 for his wildlife management practices. And now, some 36 years later, Franklin is still able to produce both cotton and rice while enhancing the environment. We rotate rice and cotton, and we've been able to increase our rice yields, use less chemicals, and I like the rice straw for the, to be my organic matter. Rice straw is slow to deteriorate and holds moisture for the cotton crop. Franklin recalls he was also one of the first in Northeast Louisiana to utilize irrigation on cotton, something many of his neighbors scoffed at. And at that time, the general opinion was cotton was a dry weather plant. But it wasn't, and uh, my yields were high from irrigation. I learned that the staple was determined by the amount of moisture it got, and you know, I learned a lot of things. And now, Franklin says he's learned that precision land leveling is the best way to irrigate. Another interesting aspect of Franklin's operation is the unique assortment of trees. He never had time in the fall to travel up north to witness the changing colors, so he brought many different species down here, learned about their characteristics, and planted them. But as Franklin will attest to, the trees are much more than just aesthetically pleasing. They also provide plenty of cover and food for deer, ducks, and turkey, something his three sons and grandchildren are very appreciative of. I believed in Ducks Unlimited. Uh, uh, I worked with my deer. Uh, I, I'm on DMAP program and I believe in it. Uh, took me a long time to believe in it. We didn't have any deer when I came started. And now we have a lot of deer and some big bucks too. The secret of planting trees though is knowing your variety, knowing what it wants, and then put the right tree on the right land. Now let it be said that George B. Franklin is much more than a farmer and conservationist. According to his business card, he's also a philosopher, distributor of blessed relief, builder, veteran, cotton, cotton jenner, rice, rice dry, philosopher, boiling uprising, ballroom balling, and I also tell tall tales. More on his other titles, especially the one about being a veteran, next week. It's sort of like duck hunting. The only problem, the ducks don't shoot back. <laughs> now, we show you what else this man has done in his long, illustrious career. And that career has been centered around work, something he had been doing for more than 60 years. I farmed when I was underage, and I worked at, uh, with a, at a stave mill. I drove a mule and a wagon. I had a social security number when I was 12. My dad 
thought that the first thing he ought to teach me is how to work, and I am proud he did. Franklin's dad, George Sr., has an interesting story as well. He was an orphan who grew tired of the orphanage and decided to jump on a train and leave town. Apparently, he grew tired of the boxcar near a train depot at Holly Ridge and decided to jump off. He was only 14 years old. And he didn't know that he was underprivileged, so he went to work, and he did well. At 17 years of age, George Jr. decided it was time for him to serve his country. He was almost not allowed in, though, because of a small size. But that small frame served him well as a ball turret gunner aboard B-17s in the Air Force. It's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. This 88 blew up and it, it knocked my windshield out of my turret. It knocked my sight off and went through the plane. And these enemy attacks don't last long, but boy, you need to be in action when they come. And I couldn't raise my turret up, and we were losing planes around me. And I would like to have had an opportunity, if I needed to, is to get up to my parachute. Well, I couldn't because of this piece of flak in the gears. Well, anyway, I stayed there and manually fired and, and worked my turret. Well, I thought I was bleeding to death. Blood was falling off both elbows, and I was getting weaker. Well, when they opened up the turret, it was hydraulic fluid and not blood. I felt a lot better, but kind of embarrassed. Franklin credits his scouting background, along with his work ethics taught by his father, for the success of his 35 missions above Germany. I don't wish anybody to have to go to war, but uh, someone's got to fight them. And, uh, and of course, I think it's my duty to protect my country. Today, Franklin is most happy when with his wife, Betty Jo, or back on the farm. Although farming is much simpler than shooting planes out of the sky, it still has been anything but a free ride. Farming has been hard, harder lately than it had been when I early was in farming. But one thing that Franklin doesn't use as an excuse is his age. My gosh, I feel young, you know. Uh, I am proud of my age, and I'm not letting age stop me hunting, fishing, or anything. Uh, I, I've already lived much longer. I didn't think I'd ever get to be 20 years old, and here I am in my 70s. So I, I think being active and using your muscles